Today in Literacy Corner, we get to analyze key details and summarize opinion texts. We also get to tackle two texts. The first of those is The Plastics Revolution and Milo Kress and the Straw Revolution. Here it all comes now. Be prepared to listen for the key details to learn all about what the plastics revolution is. Look around. Notice how many things are made of plastic or have plastic parts. Perhaps you see a water bottle, a computer, a pen, a toothbrush, or a smartphone case. Each of those items is wholly or partly made of plastic. Plastic has evolved and changed over time. 200 years ago, plastic did not exist. Many things that are now made of plastic were once made of other materials such as wood, stone, metal, glass, bone, or ivory. After the Industrial Revolution, scientists and inventors began inventing and experimenting. The result, over many years, was a new category of material called plastics. Today, more than 60 kinds of plastics have been developed. The first person to create a material like plastic was Alexander Parks. Parks, a British professor, was also an inventor. In 1856, one of his experiments yielded a firm but flexible, clear substance. Parks called it Parkasine. He built a factory to produce it. Parkasine was seen as a possible replacement for ivory, which came from elephant tusks. Ivory, however, had become scarce. Parkasine was used to make buttons, jewelry, and brush handles. At the time, it was advertised as something that was hard like an animal's horn, yet flexible like leather, and that it could be stamped, painted, dyed, or carved. However, people had concerns about it. Parkasine could catch fire, it easily cracked, and it was expensive to produce. To keep down the price, Parks cut corners on quality. Eventually, his business failed. Billiards prompted the next advance in plastics. Billiard games such as pool are played on a table with long sticks called cues and hard balls. Until the 1850s, billiard balls were made of ivory, which, as you have learned, was becoming hard to obtain. A prize of $10,000 was offered to anyone who invented a new substance to replace ivory. American John Wesley Hyatt set out to win the prize. Hyatt based his invention on Parks' earlier work. A substance Hyatt called celluloid was the result. It was the first successful plastic. Hyatt set up his own factory to make billiard balls. The celluloid balls, however, had a problem. In 1914, Hyatt wrote that occasionally the violent contact of the balls would produce a mild explosion. Hyatt went on to make more successful things from celluloid. He made dental plates, holders for false teeth, combs, piano keys, and knife handles. Other inventors and scientists continued to experiment with celluloid. They eventually made a camera and motion picture film. Thanks to Hyatt's celluloid, the plastics revolution was underway. Celluloid, however, did not maintain its form when exposed to extreme heat and cold. Celluloid strainers curled up when they were washed in hot water. Storage bowls cracked in the refrigerator. Trays for holding knives, forks, and spoons oozed if left near a sunny window too long. Clearly, there was still room for growth in the plastics business. Leo Beckland took the next big step in the plastics revolution. The Belgian-born chemist wanted to find a substitute for rubber, which was costly and had limited uses. In 1907, Beckland invented and patented a substance he called Bakelite. It was solid and resisted heat, acid, and electric currents. Also, it could be tinted different colors. Bakelite was used for pot handles, covers for electrical plugs, and radio dials. Beckland called his discovery the material of a thousand uses. In turn, he was called the father of the plastics industry. After Beckland's success, 
scientists quickly develop many new kinds of plastics with new uses. Cellophane for wrapping food was invented. Vinyl was used for shower curtains and tablecloths. New fabrics such as nylon and polyester began to be used in the 1940s. Today, plastic is truly everywhere and more new uses for it are being developed all the time. So, what caused the plastics revolution? Share with your fellow listener. To summarize this informational text, Milo Kress and the Straw Revolution, be prepared to analyze the key details. Whether from restaurants or lunchrooms, what do almost all drinks come with? Straws. They're stuck in cups, milk cartons, and even coffee. Americans use over 500 million plastic straws a day. Worldwide, there are millions, some even estimate billions, of plastic straws in the garbage found on the coasts of the world's oceans. Who knew that slurping up our favorite beverages could cause such a disastrous mess? How does this happen? Plastic straws are used one time and then thrown away. Straws cannot be recycled. According to the Four Ocean Nonprofit Corporation, straws that end up in landfills can take up to 200 years to decompose. Because straws are small and lightweight, they blow into rivers and pollute our oceans. The Ocean Conservancy organizes an annual ocean cleanup. In 2019, straws and stirrers were the third most collected items. This problem may seem overwhelming, yet the story of Milo Kress proves that just one person can make a difference for our environment. His story is amazing and we should all follow his lead. It's time to take action and stop using straws. Back in 2010, Milo noticed that every time he ordered a drink in his neighborhood restaurant, he was given a straw with it. Milo didn't need a straw. He saw lots of other customers taking their straws out and setting them on the table too. He contacted plastic straw manufacturers and asked how many straws they produced. 500 million per day. Milo was shocked. Learning just how many straws were produced each day gave Milo an idea, a brilliant idea. Milo went back to the restaurant and asked the owner if he would be willing to offer straws instead of giving them out automatically. He shared a strong argument with the owner. First, the owner would save money. Second, he would help the environment. Third, he would have less garbage to deal with. Milo was afraid the owner wouldn't listen to him because Milo was only nine years old, but he was wrong. The owner did listen, and Milo went on, a, on to launch a campaign called Be Straw Free. Milo spoke in his community, then he spoke at the state and regional levels, and then nationally. Milo is an inspiration to all kids who want to make a difference for whatever cause they care about. While he was still nine years old, Milo testified in front of the Vermont House Legislator to discuss his campaign. He also talked about how important it is to reduce plastic waste. That same year, Burlington's mayor, Bob Kiss, became the first mayor to urge restaurants to offer straws first instead of just giving them out. Milo even spoke on national television about how restaurants could use something similar to sippy cup lids instead of plastic straws. Do you use a straw when you get a drink at a restaurant? I do. Many of us do, but there's actually a push to cut back on the millions of straws that end up in U.S. landfills every day. My next guest thinks America has a bit of an addiction to straws, and he says, get this, 500 million straws are used in the U.S. every day, an average of 1.6 straws per person. Well, um, sometimes I think we forget that every straw we use, every piece of plastic, 
will be here on Earth, somewhere on Earth, even when my grandchildren are born, long after that. He shared his 500 million straws daily figure, and that figure quickly spread. A few years later, Milo traveled all over the world to speak with students about how to get involved with environmental projects they feel passionately about. Governor Hickenlooper of Colorado made July 11 Straw Free Day because of Milo's Be Straw Free campaign. Since Milo first began his campaign, cities like Seattle, Washington have banned plastic straws. McDonald's has banned plastic straws in Ireland and in the United Kingdom. In 2020, Starbucks launched a recyclable lid that will replace more than a billion plastic straws a year. Did Milo Kress launch the movement to ban plastic straws way back in 2010? It's very likely. When asked about his efforts, Milo said, here's the thing. This planet's not a place that kids will inherit at some point far off in the distant future. We live here right now, and we share this planet already. Milo saw a big problem and didn't wait for others to solve it. His hard work made a lasting impact on the environment and all the people who were inspired by his story. So what was Milo Kress's straw revolution? Share with your fellow listener. This marks the end of today's edition of Literacy Corner. Of course, another one is coming soon, and it too will be equally revolutionary.